Hi, I'm Brittany. And I'm Ashley. I know nothing. What? I know nothing! That's what Socrates is famous for saying. Oh, how ironic you mean I know that I know nothing. Sure. <laughs> Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. They're all names we've heard before, maybe even know a few things about them, but for most of us it's just a jumbled mess of old dead white guys. These are the three names we think of when it comes to philosophers, but what do they actually do and what's the difference? Well, it all starts with Socrates. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle are considered the founders of Western philosophy. But Socrates came first. Socrates taught Plato, and Plato taught Aristotle. In fact, most of the records we have of Socrates and his teachings come from Plato. Socrates didn't actually write down any of his own philosophy, so everything we know about him comes mostly from the writings of Plato and Xenophon, or however you say that, or the ancient playwright Aristophanes. This actually creates what we call the Socratic problem. Since he wrote nothing, it's difficult to paint an accurate picture of his teachings and to extract what he actually said or did. For the most part, the writings of Plato are accepted as the best record we're ever going to have of Socrates and consider them to be the most accurate representations of his philosophies, although we'll really never know. The work that most of us are familiar with from Socrates is the Apology written by Plato after the death of his mentor. The writings chronicle the trial and, spoiler alert, conviction of the great philosopher after he is arrested for corrupting the youth and being a heretic. This is where we learn about the Socratic paradox that we mentioned in the beginning. I know that I know nothing. The premise of the paradox is that Socrates travels to the oracle at Delphi and asks who is wiser than him, and the oracle responds that none is wiser than Socrates. He thinks it's a riddle of sorts, because the only thing Socrates thinks he knows is that he knows nothing. So Socrates decides to go along and discuss the riddle with people he meets. He determines that the oracle is correct because all whom he comes across thought themselves to be wise and knowledgeable, yet they were never aware of all that they did not know. Basically, they were ignorant to their ignorance. Socrates is also known for his institution of the Socratic method, which is a type of pedagogy that asks questions and answers questions with more questions. It's used to stimulate critical thinking and to eliminate ideas that form contradictions. Among all these things, Socrates taught to focus on virtue and self-development rather than wealth, and saw himself ordained to correct these mistakes within Athens, which eventually caused his death. After his death, Plato wrote the vast majority of information that we have on Socrates. It's difficult to discern which beliefs are those of Socrates and which ones sort of melded into his own philosophies. Whichever the case, Plato was a great philosopher. He founded the Academy in Athens, which was the first institution for higher learning in the Western world. He is most known for his rhetoric on Socrates, but also explored broad ranges of topics including math, science, nature, morals, and politics. The Republic was one of his well-known works in which he criticized democracy and discussed the ideal government led by a group of philosopher kings. He is also known for being possibly the first to ever write about how knowledge is more than a true belief but having an actual account of that belief. He's also well known for his theory of forms, which philosophizes that the world of ideas is the only constant and that the perceived world through our senses is deceptive and changeable. At the academy which Plato founded, Aristotle was a student who eventually went on to be one of the most influential philosophers during the medieval time, as well as the teacher of Alexander the Great. Of his 200 or so works, only 31 have survived to our modern times. Aristotle is credited for being the earliest known person to formally study logic. His studies of how people perceive the world have played a major part in influencing modern psychology. Aristotle made a few erroneous statements that could have been disproven by simple tests such as his claim that men had more teeth than women. With that said, fun fact, some of his zoological observations were nearly 2,000 years ahead of their time and were widely seen as false until they were confirmed in the 19th century. His physical science ideas were profoundly seen as accurate to the medieval scholars well into the Renaissance until ultimately replaced by Newtonian principles. On his study of logic, Aristotle delved into how to make logical deductions and strove to find the formula with which men could find all answers. He defined what we call syllogism which is the inferred logical conclusion that follows two or more premises. Like we said, these guys were smart. They spent their time thinking and came up with some of the most influential ideas that have shaped almost every part of our modern democracy and society. What's the hardest you ever thought about something and what conclusion did you come up with? Let us know in the comments below. You can also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. We have new segments on new topics every Monday and every Friday. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video, click this annotation to see all of our educational articles and send us a tweet letting us know what you want to learn about next. I'm Brittany. I'm Ashley and this is Honors Grad U. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.